it's a pleasure for, for us from the University of Vic, University Central of Catalonia, to be here today with you in such a wonderful city called Gant. So I was just running a little, I was just impressed by the beauty of the city. And thank you so much for the lesson of, of hospitality. So to start, I want to make a, this big thank you, especially to Isabel, because she has been so carefully taking care of us, and of course to Jennifer, and all the council of the Cochile, but also to, to my colleagues, the team, Paola Galvain, Mr. Goltan, Mr. Romero, and Julia Borgs, because thanks to her work, it's possible I am here today with you, and also to this man, to Philip, because I remember a long time ago, one day you contacted me, and you told me about this wonderful adventure called Cochile, and from that starting point, we developed this beautiful cooperation with you. So, thank you so much. I will talk about developing entrepreneurship. So, uh, I have a structure, my intervention in three different blocks. First of all, one is more about reflection. Why? Then we'll go to some comments about entrepreneurship and then I would like to share with you some of the entrepreneurship projects we are developing because uh, myself, as Jennifer mentioned, uh, I am an occupational therapist. I was so lucky to work in Bosnia, in Kosovo, in, Kosen in refugee camps with Mason Sun Frontiers. So when I arrived to academia, it was after this experience after working in the prison system, working with people dealing with poverty. <coughs> so, I really think that it's wonderful when we reflect and we talk, but this must connect with actions. And sometimes I feel that the academia, we're still too much connected to the Plato Academy, that we're just talking about wonderful ideas, but we must bring these ideas to life of reality. So, we'll finish talking about about uh, actions. So what's the role of the academia? What's about the context we are developing our job? What's the mission, the vision, what meaning? I would like to start with some reflections about these key points because meaning is the most important thing in life, I think. If we know why, we can deal with the how. But so many times we are thinking we are forgetting the real reason we are doing things and you know, Hannah Arendt said so many years, in certain moments of history, the wind of thought can prevent catastrophes. And we are living in these moments of history that thought connected to reality, converted into real projects from knowledge, can prevent catastrophes. To talk about catastrophes, I was walking this morning, I went to the Museum of Modern Artists too, inspire myself, looking around, I was saying, okay, you will tell this to your colleagues, and we say, you're a mad person. How you talk about catastrophe when we have this wonderful city, this wonderful atmosphere? But maybe the Cochile group called diversity and social inclusion, that this group is going to the poor neighborhoods, will understand a little more what I'm talking about. And when you see the Rodin, the thinker, you, of course, you recognize the sculpture. But maybe not all you know that this sculpture is placed in a group of a sculpture. It's called the, the Gate of Hell. And in so many aspects, we are here, and I will now defend my point of view, because I know you're saying, come on, what are you saying? <coughs> I really think that George Gross, in the 40s, reflected so much the contemporary society. I mean, it's a society that our previous lecture, talking about migration, was reflecting perfectly. And it's just, I like the George Gross because it's not just the intensity. You see, it's like there are hundreds of people just running. I don't know about you, but I have the feeling so many times that you are there, you see somebody running on the street, running very fast, you say, man, where are you going? And you say, I don't know, but I'm in a hurry. <laughs> And so many times, I have the feeling that this is academia about. We have a lot of pressures, we must do a lot of reports, and we must go for accreditations, and we publish, and 
but where are we going as academia? This is a very important question, because academia must answer the social and the hard challenges that today we are facing. And it's about unemployment, for example, in Europe. In Spain, 50% of young people is unemployed, 50%. We have degrees of 25, 30%. It's, but it's not just unemployment. It was that the pe precarity of the work. Even the academic workers that we pretend we are fashionable people with good jobs, every time academia is more and more about precarity. Because we are going more and more in the business model. So it's about more productivity with less resources. So, this is one of the contexts that, this is a painting from Ben Shan, it's called French Workers. And also it's about anxiety. And it's not your portrait during the time you were doing your PhD. It could be. Because there are studies that express how to do a PhD is a very uh, stressful life event, of course. But when you go to the figures of mental health problems, of addiction problems, and we see how these figures are keep on increasing and the major part of the answer is just giving drugs and drugs and drugs we know that something is going on but it's also about political rights it's what was happening in Hungary two weeks ago it was what we did in Greece as European Union how we were punishing the civil population with our economic measures just to make sure about the economic stability just punishing the more vulnerable sectors of the Greek society I'm working Four years ago, since last four years in Greece, through a Eurocoa project with uh, refugees, and I can tell you, the, the situation is not desperate just for the refugees. For the Greek million population, it's almost desperate. And we were doing like European unions, and we don't care because you know they are the Greeks. And of course now you don't care what these crazy people call the Catalans. It's not a problem that Spain has gone back 40 years ago. We are coming back to our beautiful dictatorship where there is no freedom of expression and of course it's prosecuted the will to express yourself and the will to decide your own, your own destiny. But it's not just Catalonia, it's not Hungary, it's not so many places. In so many countries, extreme right is growing on. What about Netherlands? What about France? What about Italian now, new populisms? So, we have so many things to think and it's a war situation. Last one is Syria. It's an atrocity. It's awful. But it's just one war. And you see, it's like, and one huge, this is Belgium, James Ensor, you don't recognize. And for me, it's a perfect reflection of the ecological degradation. You know, there are two skeletons just fighting for the last resources of the planet because we must keep on growing and growing for the economy, although we are killing all the resources. And the cadaver is the earth. And the most terrible part of the painting for me is the, the faces, the mask. You know, James Ensor always uses the mask. They are the next generations. They are working their time to life. And they won't, because we are taking the resources. But no problem, because we are already thinking, we can go to Mars, maybe we can go to Jupiter. We are so stupid as society. <laughs> because a thing is clear to say, we must save this country, this planet to make it sure our sons and our grandsons will have a place to inhabit instead of thinking, why not Jupiter? Why not Venus? Come on! So, I can do a, a longer list but I don't want to, you to start looking at me with bad eyes just saying, oh, this man talking about problems and I don't like this but we do know about this and this is our society and we have the responsibility to act to react and to respond to this society and as I said before so many times, I am part of the Academia since, since 2000. <coughs> Actually, we are the Barco de la Medusa, you know, the, from Jericho. We are the academics just trying to flow in this market society and just worried about PhD accreditations to publish in the cool you that you know got. And I'm not saying this is wrong, but I'm saying this is not enough. And we must think farther and wider. So, I love John Dewey, who said, University, we are the prophets of democracy. Prophets of democracy. And our responsibility as academia is to develop an intelligent action. And what is an intelligent action? It's the ones who really understand 
the context and who is able to transform, to improve the context. And we need to develop this complex mentality, like Edgar Morin said in his report about the seven knowledges for the education of the future. Complexity. So it's so wonderful when we have cohesion that we can put together so many professionals from the health and social sciences. What you, we are doing here is really wonderful, it's great. But not to forget, we need more people on board. I am working a lot with people from business sector, communication sector, engineering, arts, culture, and especially the communities, the populations. But it's time to think again, Magritte. It's not just what we are, where we are now, it's about where we want to go. I love the Chinese, the Chinese people. When well, Empire is the president of whoever says, in five years we'll be here, in ten years we'll be here, in twenty, and they go for it. I don't know in your countries, in Spain, it's what for tomorrow, because our politicians are just worried to see the newspapers tomorrow, which new will appear that will have more votes for me. And we're just complete you know, improvisation. So it's very important to think, to really consider where we want to go. So, I think entrepreneurship is a strong tool, it's a strong way to go for this. Because I am quite sure that all I'm saying it resonates to you. I'm talking about common worries we have, because we are as academia, we feel this pressure, we feel this stress. But I think a lot of us, I hope it's not just me, feel that things are not going so well. At least we have the feeling that we can do it make better. And maybe we should be more proactive and not just follow all these guidelines and structures that are given to us. So we'll talk about challenge-based learning, service learning, creativity, innovation, technology, ethics and passion, and these components that for me are very important to be connected with entrepreneurship. Because the idea is to start something, to create something different. So. So many of us have been talking about problem-based learning and it's very fashionable, it's wonderful and I love it. But it's, for me it's not enough. For me it's more about challenge-based learning. Because when you do a soup, it's not just to put the water and boiling water. It's about the salt, it's about the ingredients. So when you just do problem-based learning and if we keep it just in a rational level, it's not enough. It's necessary, it's wonderful, it's great. But what they consider, and this just what I am presenting are just opinions, of course, and apologize me if I say something not to say it's too clever, but I do my best. But these are just my ideas. But we need to put, especially ethics, we need to put awareness, we need to put passion. Because we can read 20 books about entrepreneurship, and we can know 20 definitions, and I can have a master, a PhD, you know, I have a PhD in entrepreneurship. And and what? There is no passion, there is no ethics, there is no will, there is no action, there is nothing. So I think so many times our projects are failing because they are missing these components. And I love what this man said about that uh, migration is about politics, I agree, I agree it's about power, I agree, but it's also about ethics. I also put ethics on the, on the board and I will explain later. So for me it's very important to consider when we are developing entrepreneurship projects, it's not just, I love the problem base, I love it and so I depart from here, but I love, I need to introduce the ethics, the passion, the awareness, the challenge, to move to this challenge based learning. So, one of the tools you are already using and that we are using at the University of Vic is something that you all know and you are already developing is the service learning from the university. If we connect the challenge-based learning with this service learning, it's very powerful. How we can afford a society to have thousands of brilliant minds, of passionate people, who are our students, close in these rooms, maybe to protect them from reality. And we close so many times. I talk in general, of course. So I'm not talking about you, I'm talking academia in general, eh? so please, not to say that. But in general, we, we, we just put the, the students in the jail of the university and then, okay, they can go in the field work, in the second, in the third, and meanwhile, 
society is burning, but we have them protected and in a very structured environment. So why not to promote, of course, this service learning that is ensure, ensuring sorry, the quality of the learning process because we are academia, it's about excellence, it's about arte, but at the same time we are giving a service to society and it's learning by doing and I think it's the only way to learn. In the portal? Oh. It's the only way. The most important lessons I will tell you later, I, I did not learn at university. Sorry for my colleagues of the University of Zaragoza, they will say, oh, you are a bad student. Yes, I know. I learned the most important lessons that I am applying today working as a professional therapist at the refugee camps. I learned from life. The life academy is so important. And from that, then I can apply all the knowledges from occupational therapy, from anthropology, sociology, philosophy, business models. I could apply to that, but my basement was the real project that I was developing. So also, we are talking a lot about evidence-based practice, evidence practice. That's wonderful again. But what about humanity-based practice? When you are in an emergency unit, it's not time to do certain kind of operations. Sorry, we cannot go to aesthetic. After we we'll save your heart attack, then we'll move to your static operation for your nose. I would like it. Huh? Mm -hmm. But when you are in the urgency unit, you need to prioritize. And this is what I learned working in the refugee camps. We had huge problems in Kosovo, Bosnia, whatever. So we had few resources. And we had no time to do it. Okay, we are going. Everything can be done. And everything is. No. We need to prioritize. And today, from the social and the health sector, also, we need to prioritize. And we must be very aware also of the political and the economic structure of knowledge development. For example, how can it be that more than 90% of the research goes to study just the illness affecting the rich people? And we are completely neglecting all the illnesses that nobody can pay for them, for example. That's not possible. So I think service learning, as I will tell you, is one of the strategies we can really develop, implement, and that you are already implementing. I think you can agree or disagree with me, but I'm sure you are already doing. If we talk about research, always I love to talk about actual research. I mean, one of the most depressing experiences I had was in a congress. They invited me to USA. I was thinking, oh, I go here with the gods of knowledge from, you know, from USA. And this was this psychiatrist presenting a job paper, just uh, he did a study of 10 years, just saying that the hypothesis was if you, your father or parents are, have mental health problems and you are in a poor neighborhood, when you go older, you will have mental health problems with more probabilities with the rest of society. And suddenly he discovered it was right. And he invests like 2.5 million or whatever just to discover this. And da, 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 da. so my answer, my question was um, what kind of programs did you develop to promote resilience between the population and to deal with the reality? Oh, no problem. No problem. So research cannot be just do, just to do this kind of, to create a knowledge. If we discover something wrong, we must deal with it. Last summer, I was in the University of British Columbia, very happy. They have a wonderful program researching all the mental health problems of the homeless populations. If you want to visit hell, on Earth, go to Hastings in Vancouver. You know, you arrive to Vancouver, wonderful city, you have the ports, the lotus, whatever. Walk 500 meters right to downtown Vancouver. You arrive to Hastings, and you have thousands of people living in the streets. And they have a wonderful research project with all the tech and all the technology just to know what are the mental health problems. Again, it was so stupid to ask, that's great, and what are the intervention programs about? Ah, we all have. And he was surprised about her question. I was almost crying. So, research is about democratization. So many times we have converted the people in objects. We do research. Oh, this is a subject. It's Philip. I'm going to research him. They are, they are not objects. They are subjects. They must be participants, active participants. So we can use so many techniques, and you are already doing like photo boys, video boys, whatever, for them to become active. And also it's about to give back the results of the research. We are using a lot of art, we are using exhibitions, 
we do videos to show and to share the research results with the community. Because sorry, but I don't think they will, the, the normal community will read the British journal, the American journal, the Spanish journal, or whatever. So we must make an effort to go back with the research results. And we are using a lot of art. We're using exhibitions. For example, we did a research about suicide. And we converted it into art exhibition with a narrative from the people. So it's about uh, this democratization. And I think always we need to look for the social and the health impact. We cannot afford to start thinking, hmm, do you know the angels, male or female? is a question for the next decade, but not for now. We must be very clear. And maybe some too are you smiling, but last year we presented a project, a huge research project about preventing suicide. You know in Spain, it's just the first reason of non-natural death in Spain. So we're presenting a mixed research from the quantitative, qualitative, whatever, to design programs to prevent suicide, and we did not win the grant. And the one, the grand winner, and you say, you are criticizing because you are jealous. You are mean man. Yes, I am. I am very jealous. It was the role of the lawyers in the 16th century in Europe. <laughs> I was thinking, OK, next year, I will write a proposal. Suicide rates in lawyers of the 16th century in Europe. I was thinking, come on. It's amazing. The lawyers in the 16th century, yeah, it's amazing. But our people is dying of suicide. It's the first reason. Come on. So I think we must try to focus. So when we talk about social entrepreneurship, health entrepreneurship is about giving innovative solutions. Tomorrow we'll have a wonderful lecture about creativity and about innovation. She knows more than me, so I won't talk about this. But it's about looking for innovations. And when we are thinking of entrepreneurship, it's not just to create an enterprise. This is one of the products we are doing. We are creating social enterprises too, but I can be entrepreneurial people connected to processes, to products, to programs. Entrepreneurship, it's a way of being. It's about passion, it's about creativity, it's about knowledge. I'm not saying it's not about knowledge, but it's a knowledge connected to life. And we have no long time to do this if we want to present, preserve this wonderful. So, I strongly believe entrepreneurship, academia, is strongly connected to ethics, is strongly connected to philosophy. Because for me, I was telling my students, the philosophical foundations are the roots. Then there is the tree. But the roots of the tree is the philosophy, the trunk, the whatever. And so many times we're just looking for fruits. And we are in the sol solutionist society. We just want easy solutions for all the huge problems. But we must go down to the roots. And the roots is Han Aregen, who says, human action is our capacity to create miracles. It's about Emmanuel Mounier. It's about the transformation of the values and the transformation of the infrastructures to deal with the power structures we were talking before. It's about Paul Ricoeur to remember the phenomenology of the capable being we are able to transform society, we as humans. As I want to stop thinking about this post society that it looks like there is nothing to do, sorry. Before we believed in the progress of humanity and now it's like we can just wait, expect for the catastrophe. So the question is, until when we'll have ecological context, until when we'll have pensions, until when uh, and we are taking this thought from the system that there is no way to deal with it. And they are creating our importance to think about, to change it, because it's like there is no alternative. There was, you know, Fukuyama in the 80s said, okay, there was a war, capitalism versus society of communism, communism fall down, war is finished, and forever capitalism. And since then, anything is able to think about alternative. And now it looks like there is nothing to do with the planet. We must just go and start exploring Mars and Venus. Because here, no. We must be rebelled against this thinking. We can't transform society. And we have to recover the faith in the human capacity through knowledge to improve societies for better. It's about Leonardo Boff suffering more than admiration. 
makes us to think. You know the Greek, the wonderful world starts thinking? Leonardo Boyd from Brazil says, suffering make us to think and to react. Marina Garcés is criticizing the post society, this society where it looks like there is nothing to do, we must just accept the system, adapt to the system. Every time the system is just pressing a little more, but we must accept and adapt to this because we are so afraid to lose our jobs, that's the reality. So we are just following the system because we are afraid not to be screwed ourselves. But not to question it, please. Uh, Enrico Dussel from South America, The Ethics of Liberation. Emmanuel Levinas, we are humans. Right? Still? I don't know. It's a question. Uh, no, sorry, I think Are we humans? Any human in the room? As human beings, we have to react to the suffering of the people. And Levinas said very clear, ethics is the first philosophy. We must react to the face, to the other, because we are humans. So we cannot afford, as Europeans, that 50,000 people is dying in the Mediterranean. Mediterranean was the Mare Nostrum. Now it's becoming a cemetery. And we don't care, because we are not traveling that boat. And now people from open arms, who are risking their life to rescue them, just put them, they are prosecuting them. As they, because of course, it's, it's wrong to try to save a life now. You are gonna go, you are kill, we are criminalizing human life. That's terrible. And this is very important, you know, Catalan painting, Joan Miró. The problem is that we are repetitive when we need to be creative. And sometimes we keep on repeating the things because we have always done this way. <coughs> or for example, I see in Spain, uh, when we talk about community intervention, so many professionals are afraid to go to communities because, you know, the unit department is my castle, and here I feel safe, and this is my territory, so here I'm the boss, I, to go, I'm afraid to go to the community. But what I'm doing here is not worth, but I, I, I keep on doing, and keep on being repetitive, although the results are not good. So entrepreneurship is about innovation, but it's not to kill everything. Because also there are some tendencies, it looks like that we must change everything, every week. It's like when, you know, with Sarah and this fashion novel, every week you need to change your, your clothes. No, we must to keep the good knowledge. I won't renounce to Leonardo Wolf, for example, but we must change the things that are not running. And so many times our practices are not. So Einstein is a wonderful man, if we talk about entrepreneurship, about innovation, Education is not the learning, it's about the training of the man. It's exactly what they are doing in this project of diversity and social inclusion from Kohiri, when they are walking around the neighborhoods in Gantt. This is what they are thinking, start thinking. Uh, never stop questioning, this is extremely important. Just to allow ourselves to make mistakes. <laughs> I have done so many mistakes, I won't tell you because I will see the shame to go back home, and of course my colleague will say, come on, Salvador, you are talking for University of Vic. I've done so many mistakes, but always I'm learning from them, and we are improving. So, this is very, very important. Uh, it's about me, you know, uh, Einstein also is about me, but it's about to understand that life is a miracle. You can live life like nothing is a miracle, or like everything is a miracle. And I strongly believe that if we want to be entrepreneurs, we want to have the energy to change things, we must recover our capacity to admire the greatness of human life. It looks like we go with a very dark glasses and we are not reacting to the wonderful experience of life. We are not reacting to the beauty. We are not reacting to the greatness. Because we're so worried I have to publish in a crew. <laughs> of course you are. And I think this is extremely important. So entrepreneurship is not just about social enterprises. It's about Gandhi, it's about Luther King. It's about Emily Pankhurst, who was the British suffragist. She started thinking and being innovative. She was not repetitive. Because to be repetitive at that time meant that she cannot vote. Because she was a female. She said, this is wrong. This is a stupid. You men are stupid. You're right. We have to vote, and she was not repeating the tradition. 
but she also was innovative, how to fight with the tradition. So when we want to think, I would love to change things, but I cannot do it, remember our history. If I am here talking in a, a country that still is not, again, a dictatorship is because so many people fight the dictatorship. If you are female and you are here as academics, it's because of people fighting. So it's about fighting. Entrepreneurship is also about fighting. If we pretend to change reality without fighting, it's not, not possible. So it's about, about networking. Networking is very important, especially not just Kohiri, this is wonderful, but it's not enough. I, always, I work, I told you more, with business sector, uh, communication, engineering, artists, civil society, public society, enterprises. So we need to welcome everybody. And especially the protagonists are the communities. So many times we replace the importance of the community, of the people, and we put... It's about technology. Technology, technology. We are in contact with one group, it's digital care in a university. We're in contact with the groups of engineering. Oh, we try to introduce the latest technology in our projects, of course. And also it's look like also it's to look for funding. I was finding looking for funding. Tomorrow I will have a workshop and one of the key points will be funding. So if you're interested in funding, come tomorrow to the workshop. <laughs> Last Monday I presented a grant for a project to peer-to-peer. -to -peer. Next week I am presenting another grant and then I will present another grant. So funding also is about this. The need to fund the project. Because the people I work with, nobody is paying for the projects. It means I, I need to find a... So very important things. Remember, be in contact with the beauty of life. If we keep on the green part of existence and we forget about the beauty of life, we won't have the energy the capacity to react. And you know it's like a storm. It's like a rain. Every day when you, I don't know in your countries, but you, you want to be depressed, just see the news in Spain, Catalonia, you see four times the news, it's like you are crying. So we must be in contact with the beauty of life. We must be very aware of the resilience, the amazing capacity of the human spirit to fight, to deal with trauma and to keep on going. You know, this is Van Gogh when uh, his nephew, Theo, was born, it was a moment of hope. So it's about resilience, it's about keep on fighting. Because if you want to be entrepreneurs, and you think that everything will be successful, eh? forget it. There are so many times we present a project and they say, no, maybe I present 10 projects and I have five, six success, I am happy. But there are four that are not accepting us. So it's about resilience, it's about to believe of this capacity of human spirit. And I was in a big meeting, hi, welcome, uh, I was in a big meeting with one of the, the most important entrepreneurs in Spain, it's called uh, La Fajera, it's Cristobal Colón, and when he was talking about entrepreneurship, he was saying, remember, you are going to